Oh my god. Is that an internet outlet? Have I never seen that? Babe, do we have an internet outlet in here? My historical fashion friends and welcome to a new episode where I'm going to show you how I made my apron dress or smoker and I love this outfit so much it is totally finished I finished weaving the hem last night and in total weaving the hem probably took me like 12 hours which is definitely a little over twice as long as I thought it would so if you are planning on weaving your hem, just know it will take about five times as long as uh, just doing a, a rolled hem around the edge. But I'm really pleased with the way it looks. Since there are no complete extant examples of this kind of garment, I did a lot of research on various ones that other people had made and some kind of guesses at how it might have been made uh, as you can see behind me, this is like a peplo style outfit. And so this is kind of a more evolved version of that. And some apron dresses are a little more loose fitting, kind of more closely to something like this. But I decided that I wanted to use a form fitting pattern uh, because I just like the way that looked a little better. So it has four main pieces and um, as you'll see in a little bit, I kind of um, messed up when I was cutting this out because I was doing it at like one in the morning. And I don't know why I decided to do that, but I was just, uh, couldn't sleep. So I decided I would cut this out and I accidentally cut out two times as much width as I needed for the main front and back piece, which meant that I had a lot less fabric left over when I went to cut the side pieces. So I actually had to do them in two pieces. Uh, so there's the front piece, back piece, and then the two main side pieces and the little gores that go in. And I had meant to cut just four pieces. So it added a little bit more work for me. I was also very excited to be able to use my tortoiseshell brooches and these beads. Um, four of the beads came from a Destache website that I frequently use, and then three of the beads came from my adventure to Jorvik Biking Center, and I was really excited to pick out beads. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but when there's like a lot of little things to choose from, I get really excited about trying them out. I just saw a bug on my wall. <clears throat> We're getting everything sprayed tomorrow. The exterminators are coming, so uh, I have to move everything from my closets and cabinets and put it in the center of the room. So it'll basically look the way it usually does. <laughs> I added this little uh, tablet woven band to the top of the dress which I was really pleased with. Uh, you may have seen this before. It used to be a belt that I used. So I just took it, attached it, and then kind of cut off the belt ends. And this is actually a really simple garment to make. It actually took me more time to weave the hem than it actually took me to sew the garment together because for the inside seams, I used a sewing machine and then I just felled them all down, which was pretty quick. And I was actually finishing this dress on the way to Jorvik Biking Center, uh, except for the hem, which I did not do. I often wonder to myself whether people in the past wore garments before they were finished because they had something like the hem left to do, which isn't that critical if you aren't going to wash it yet. And if they kind of just were like, oh, I'll wear it and I'll finish it later. I don't know if anybody knows the answer because I do that now. <laughs> so I haven't finished something. I have a pair of pajama pants that I still have not finished the inside seam of and I just hope that it doesn't fray 
every time I put it in the wash. Anyway, let's get to the construction. 1 a.m. Cutting out the fabric. Me realizing my general grievous error. All the cutout pieces as shown in my previous drawing. I'm trying to use my mother-in-law's sewing machine and I'm really messing it up over and over because it has a front-loading bobbin and I was too proud to say that I was messing it up after she said, do you know how to use it? And I said, yes, I do. Now I'm pinning together all four large pieces after sewing the small gores to the larger side panel. Then I sewed all those together and tried on the dress. I realized it was a little large and needed some taking in on the front and back seams near the waist. I was also testing out the woven band in the mirror to see if I liked the way it looked. The straps are pinned on for now until I finish them separately and attach them to the back only. I always finish the tops of my gores by hand as to avoid sewing machine disasters. I did cut a little under the armpit to make some room under there. Also, it does stay up without the straps. Now I'm cutting the armpit bit on my lap when I should really be using a table and evening out the rest of the top portion. Then I sewed the straps and turned them inside out so I could finish them by hand on the top and bottom. I sewed the two smaller loops completely by hand as I thought that would be easiest. I just did a running stitch to hold each side down. Basically, I folded it into four pieces, kind of. And then I folded it in half so that the raw edges were on the inside. I used stab stitches for this as the layers were so thick it was hard to do a running stitch. I folded the top over so that the hem would be under the decorative band instead of on the inside. I also sewed the loops and the straps on, but later I ended up moving them because they were too far to the outside and it didn't look correct. Afterwards, I felt down the seams with each seam allowance on either side due to the bulk. The top also had a machine sewn hem which would be under the woven band and not seen. And now for the reveal. Thank you all for watching. 
If you like videos like this, you can hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell. Otherwise, uh, YouTube won't tell you that I posted a new video. So I can't wait to do a little uh, get ready with me as a Viking lady video. I have just taken apart a bunch of palettes to try to make a little set and uh, we'll see how that works out. If you want to see more pictures of the outfits I've made and my process, you can head over to Instagram at gabrielle.westwood. And I can't wait to see you all next time. Thanks for watching.